friends didn't find it funny, but your girlfriend found it funny, whew, you're off the hook, it's okay. I think the other way around, there can still be repercussions, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, but they're short term, if you annoy her friends, then you just, they're constantly in the air being like, oh, oh, Adam, he's such a jerk, whereas at least if it's just her, I can make it up to her. That's, that's the plus side. Fair enough. All right, guys, we are in the game now. It is game number three between these guys as every, I feel like I should be saying yes as well, uh, just for good measure. <laughs> as the scores are tied up at 1-0 and spawning to the top left position as our green turn player representing Team Empire, we have Beastie Cutie. And his opponent, the blue Protoss in the top right hand corner, the artist formerly known as MVP Finale, playing from Korea, we have Duck Dale. So, what do we expect? Is BCQ going to play straight up? Is he going to go for a proxy factory again? Are we going to see something else entirely? I just don't know. This is very, very close. I, I, I really can't call it either way. I'm, I'm thinking about it, and in my eyes, there were sort of two different scenarios. Either Duck Day Arc... Uh, has been practicing so much while we weren't looking and would absolutely blow Beastie Cutie out of the water, or we were going to get the sickest, most intense, really, really close series. And it's the latter. It really is just the latter. Um, which means that I, I don't think there's any real way to predict this. We have uh, a very, very large macro map. Looks like Duck Dayok's going to be scouting. Oh, he's actually going for the Nexus before anything else here. And uh, it looks like he's going to be scouting the south position first. So I think both players are going to macro up. We're not going to see any cheese early game when all spawn locations are possible. I, 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 I can't call it at all medals. I, I just don't, I don't know. No, I, I love the reaction out of Duck Deok though. Going, ah, oh, last game I lost to my opponent, like all in me and going for a proxy factory. Guess I better Nexus first this game. Like just in case. Playing the real mind games, they're like, he won't do it again. He won't. Will he? Will he? He may. I don't think he would on a on a map where it's not two player. But no. then, then again, uh, BCQD is building a bunker within plain sight of this pylon because he did scout his opponent first. So uh, Duck Dayok now knows, of course, that he's in the top left because uh, he went cross positions and then immediately saw an SCV come in from the left hand side. Going to be pulling four probes to try and deal with this. But we have got a marine and a second one coming up here. So can the bunker get destroyed in time? Well, hopefully it should be able to now. This SCV was taken out by another SCV on its way over with a Marine to come and support it, but the SCV is the priority target. If the probes do manage to kill it and the bunker is stopped, then that is the most important thing, but it's going to be very close. The SCV will finish the bunker and the Marine gets in it. That is not what Duck Deok would have wanted at all. Oh, and now the bunker is just going to be prodding away at these probes. I wouldn't be... Yep, there we go. I was about to say that I wouldn't be surprised to see the Marines just pop out for a little bit of harassment against the probe line before potentially popping back in later. That's exactly what's going to happen here. A very, very difficult situation for our Protoss player to be in. And uh, BCQD must be feeling pretty confident with himself right now. His command center is going down. He has his factory. He hasn't got more than one barracks at the moment, but he does have a reactor down on it. And uh, back at home, he's playing this quite normally, but Duck Deox just not able to get his normal game down. He, ooh. But there's the proxy pilot. It looks like he wants to respond with some aggression here. Now, I think the thing that is really worthwhile noting is that Duck Deok's opening was a Nexus first, which means that he put a lot of his game plan into getting this good economy, which has been denied for a long, long period of time. No mining going down there. It's actually meant that Beastie Cutie is able to secure his own natural base in the meantime. And that just means that worker-wise, these two are very equal in terms of income. They're going to be very equal. And any advantage that Duck Deok may have got from going Nexus first has been completely eradicated. Yeah, and ooh, uh, ooh. did Duck Dayok notice that? Uh, Nick was actually just on it. That probe at the natural just went off to uh, shift click a pylon, but for some reason it was blocked and he didn't put it down. So, okay, he did put it up elsewhere, but it was because it was going to be the proxy. I was worried he was going to get supply blocked for a second there, but everything seems to be fine. This Zealot is going to walk into a marine wall pretty quickly here, and he's going to find that uh, that is not a pleasant way to die. Widow Mine going down as well from BCQD, and Duck Dayok 
looking like he's getting ready to put a little bit of hurt on here. A lot of warpins popping out. Yeah, we are gonna have a really, really oh, oh, well. Oh, oh, this is really good. Oh, the Marines, they're oh, getting one stalker. My. The second one will get away. Importantly, though, what I wanted to note was Beastie Cutie does have two Widow Mines in his natural, which holding off gateway pressure, Widow Mines incredibly efficient at that. And uh, oh dear, well, we're about to find out. One's out immediately getting taken out, and the second one really going for it. And we have got a time warp, not the best time warp in the world, but it might be good enough here. Both Widow Mines have now um, gone, and the SCVs are being targeted down. The first Widow Mine still 16 seconds away from being able to do too much. And with the Mothership Core here as well, this is a tremendous amount of pressure being put on BCQD. 49 to 43 supply at the moment. BCQD still technically has a larger army, but uh, Duck Daox in a pretty good position. Yeah, he is in a really, really nice position here. BCQT isn't out of this yet, though. He is holding his ramp quite nicely, and Ducktail has committed quite a lot to this, but can't land the orbital command, meaning that the Stalkers can just walk straight into the main base. There are a lot of Marines here, though. SCBs acting as a little bit of a buffer to prevent the Zeddits from engaging, but this yeah. is now just all on defense mode. There's a big, big problem for Ducktail right now which is his zealots don't have the surface area to attack these SCVs and the marines. And because they don't have the surface area, it meant that for the second half of this engagement, BCQD was actually doing a very, very good job of engaging as efficiently as possible. And for that reason, I actually think this aggression can't go any further than this right now. Ooh, especially with those widow mines there as well. The worker supply is 27 to 28. It's actually not that different. And after picking off this reactor at the barracks, which is nice, I really think it's time for Duck Day out to get out of there. There's not much more he can do. No, there isn't much more he can do. He's, he's just got those couple of stalkers. There's also Widow Mines dotted around, which means that if those stalkers are somewhat careless in where they run, they could get taken out. Both of them, if they just run straight out of this base, will die. And that in itself is just a little bit of extra loss, but currently these stalkers going a very cautious route will just be able to dodge it. That's a really smart move by Duck Dioc, and exactly the sort of thing he needs to be doing. I, I love the decision from Beastie Cutie to land the orbital. He recognized that the Zealots... Oh, Widow might drop in the main piece. He's going to burrow it, and he will get the burrow down. Oh, my. Both of them are detonating there, and we don't actually have... Uh, we don't have an observer just yet. It has been chrono boosted out of the natural, though. It should get there before another uh, Widow Mind hit is available, so that will get cleaned up. Number of workers killed this game so far. 10 to 7 in favor of Duck Dayok, thanks to that earlier aggression. But BCQD did Oh, this is so such well. a smart move. BCQD picking up one of the Widow Mines to take it to the natural, meaning that the Observer has to decide which way it's going to go. One will definitely detonate again, um, and it is going to be the one of the natural. So a couple more probes go down. Really good choice. Very, very nicely played. They're really maximizing the use of those Widow Mines, and uh, BCQD is going to be feeling pretty chuffed. The workers killed are now 10 all. And... I still can't get over, I really love how BCQD recognized that the reason he was losing that engagement was because the Zealots were getting too much surface area. So just moving back into his main base and landing that orbital. So, so pivotal to him staying in the game back then. Right now he's got 36 workers to 39 of Duck Dayak, but he has got double mules to work with and his orbital commands back down as well. In the meantime, he has got a significantly larger army supply, 31 to 18 at the moment, and he is pushing in for another bit of pressure. So, this next round of pressure will be considerably harder to hold off. Even though there's no upgrades for this infantry, there are medevacs, and that makes it a lot harder to defend. And in terms of the defensive units here, well, do you know what? There's not that much. There's three zealots, and that is pretty much it. The rest of the army staying up for drop defense. The forward pylon getting taken down there by Beastie Cutie, so Duck Dayok unable to put any counter-aggression on using that pylon. Even supply blocked him for just a moment there, and it looks like Beastie is trying his best to force an engagement. Good Widow Mine hits there on the starting Zealots. We have a scan going down as well to see where if uh, the Overseer, sorry, not Overseer, if the Observer is still around, and now he's going to be cutting them back because the medevacs are starting to be taken out. And if he had two medevacs with his army, I would have stayed and tried to pick off all these stalkers. But y there's only so much you can stim, especially if there's a single medevac left on the field. You are completely correct. Now, we do have an observer rallied up towards the main base. That means the... Oh, no, it has been changed rally. That's good now. So there we go. The final mine taken out. But mine's early game, just so efficient against Protoss because <coughs> Protoss tend not to have many units, but they're fairly beefy. So if you manage to take them out and one-shot them with a Widow Mine, you can take out a very large percentage of the Protoss force very, very quickly. And that means that you're going to be able to engage it much better indeed. The third and base is up and running. Sorry. And yeah, and this is there goes good. the observer. Yeah, so there was a 
yeah, Observer literally over a turret, and uh, Beast Security opting for the slow approach of building a turret underneath the Observer, which seems to have worked at the end of the day. So we have got four gateways up. The Robotics Bay is up inside the main base as well for Duck Dayak, so potentially can start... And that is a money scan if I have ever seen one. It sees pretty much everything. Actually, not even pretty much. It sees everything. Knows what's coming down. Knows the second forge is there as well. So going into double upgrades. Sees all of the tech. A scan going down as well. Takes a good little look at the army. Picks off the observer. That means that there is currently no observers on the field. Another one being forced to kind of boost out. And this is just really solid play by the Terran. Oh, and we have a triple medevac drop coming up here up north. There are a few gateway units here, but not that many. I don't think it's enough to stop three medevacs full of units. Looks like BCQD actually deciding against that once he saw those units there, which is fair enough. No harm done at the moment. But uh, he wants to make sure he can get into an army composition soon that combats what Duck Dayok has. Uh, we can see, he, like a lot of other Protoss players, he's only staying with the one Colossus at the moment, so potentially hoping to pay too many Vikings out of Beastie, perhaps. Yeah, this is a really smart move, actually. If you just get the single Colossus out, force a lot of Vikings, you can cause problems. But this drop still just waiting there, a triple drop, just sitting at the top, trying to force Duck Deok to bring his army down. But he's being smart, he's keeping a lot there, almost preemptively prepared for it to move in. And the Stalkers are in position. These Medivacs do need to turn around. And by turn around, I mean move into the main base and yep. absolutely wreak havoc because that's exactly what BCQ is doing right now. Massive warp in actually from Duck Dayo. Is it going to be enough though? The robotics units are so far out of position right now. Only gateway units available. And with concussive shell, these zealots are falling like dominoes. The main base is in a lot of trouble right now. Is he going to snipe the Nexus? No, he's going for... Oh, what looks like potentially an Artosis panel, but there is Extended Thermal Lance, and there goes Extended Thermal Lance, a Colossus going down, an Immortal almost going down as well, and this is a tremendously good drop from Beastie. Can he knock out one of the last Korean players in this tournament? Yes, I think is the short answer to that. I was hoping, or I believe, that Duck Dirk would have been able to grab all of those Stalkers and focus down at least one or two of the Medivacs as they were flying in. But a great boost and a great attack angle means that I was, I completely underestimated Beastie Cutie getting that drop off. And now he has done a tremendous amount of damage. Delaying extended Thermal Lance and also knocking out that Robotics Bay means no more Colossi coming down. The one thing I'd love to see from Beastie Cutie now is for him to jock down that, or a Ghost Academy, just because the tech switch is starting to occur. We're 17 and a half minutes into this game and it wouldn't be too late to do so. Or this too early to do so, rather. Oh, and a lot of Vikings coming in here, actually. Eight Vikings, and uh, the number of Colossi on the field are one exactly at the moment, and they are on a hunting mission. They will get that Colossus. There is nothing that can be done by Duck Dayok about this right now. That Colossus is going to die a pretty sad and lonely death, but now the Vikings are a little bit superfluous. Is he going to land on top of the sentries and try and take them out? I wouldn't mind a massive engagement going here at the ramp. Again, only really uh, gateway units here. The Vikings are possibly going to land in the middle line. Yes, they are. So we're trying to draw the army away while more economic damage is being done to Duck Dayok here. Really, really good stuff. And uh, this now means he can potentially go in and snipe off the third as well while keeping the rest of the army occupied. Great stuff here from Beastie Cutie. Pulling his opponent in all sorts of directions and I don't see how Duck Dayok can come back from this. Nope, Duck Dayok is at half the supply of Beastie Cutie who is just absolutely everywhere. <coughs> Landing the Vikings in the main base as well. Killing even more probes. Already managed to take out 23 this game taking out the third base, just being so aggressive. The Ghost Academy finished up behind this, a triple drop loading up, ready to go in, but Duck Dayak, he knows G it's over. 